Hello everybody. Today we're going to do a reflection tessellation. Last time we did a translation tessellation, fairly straightforward. We took our cereal box, we drew a shape, we slid it up, we drew a shape, we slid it across, and then on our grid we slide our template across, and that's why it's called a translation tessellation. This one is a little trickier. This is a reflection tessellation. You'll need again scissors, pencil, eraser, ruler, tape, and Recycle cardboard. I like these because with the two sides you can see the different sides you've cut out which is important for a reflection tessellation. But if you don't have something that's different on one side you could color on one side or you could um, you see if you have a line uh, index card that works too. These ones we're going to make three inches by three inches just for the demo it's easier to see. If you want to fit more in your sketchbook you could do five centimeters by five centimeters which is the same as about two inches by two inches. So, you know, draw your square, which is going to be, in this case, three by three, pretty straightforward. We're going to cut it out. I'm not going to, I'll spare you the cutting out. There's one that I've cut out already, so you cut it out. Okay, so it's done. Then we're going to draw a right on each section of your, of your cardboard. You're going to put one two, three, four, like so. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw and it's important to go from edge to edge or to be aware where it doesn't quite reach the edge. So I've drawn out this shape with a little movement and I do slide it to the other side but this time when going from one to three I also flip it. And the important thing to remember is here it didn't quite reach either edge so when I slide it down I have to do the same thing it's got to match up so if it was closer to this edge than to this edge I should have really done it right to the edge it's easier to understand you try to match it up and the same thing here this one clearly goes right down to the bottom so I slide it across and turn it and because it was right at the bottom down here that means it goes right to the top and you can see it makes kind of a bird shape Okay, so then I would tape it into place. Okay, so again, the important thing is when you cut it out, it started right in the corner here, right at the bottom. So when I slide it and flip it, it now has to be right at the top here. If it's not lined up perfectly, it won't make a proper template. And you can tape it on both sides so it's more solid. But you can see the use of having a two-sided cardboard now. I'm going to skip to the next step. So here we go. I've done my 3 by 3 inch grid in my sketchbook. And I'll show you how you now do a, a reflection tessellation. So you lay it down. You can start anywhere. In this case, I guess I started here. And I line it up with my grid. I'm going to do it over in marker so you can see it better. And I have to say I drew this in haste so it's not very beautiful. But I'm going around my template and I'm making sure that my shape is lined up on the grid. So the straight lines are lined up with the straight lines. I'll go back over my pencil. I can erase that later. Okay. Now as you can see, if I want to slide it across, it doesn't fit. I have to flip it. And that's how it becomes a reflection tessellation. Also want to make sure that the grid lines up. So I flipped it here. Again, I'm not drawing it as nicely as you will at home. Afterwards, I can erase all the pencil and color it in. So when trying to figure out how it fits, as you move across, you can see that you have to turn it. You have to flip it back and forth, and that's how it's reflecting. And you can fill up your whole sheet this way. And you can see he's upside down in some places and right side up in the other, but he kind of looks like a bird. So I say he could be a she, but uh, I feel with the advent of spring, this kind of looks like a cardinal, don't you find? So I could color him in and make him into a cardinal. Uh, could be 
kind of funny. I have to decide, is that the tail or is that the tail? If you were with me, I'd say please vote. I'm going to let that be a wing, although it's pretty strange as a wing, but we'll just do it that way. And we'll say that this is the tail. And there's a bird. Okay, and he can still be a bird when he's flipped upside down. I'm drawing this upside down, so I don't know how good it is, but that's okay. So it goes back and forth, back and forth, flipping it as you go. There's a handout that goes with this so that you can look at the handout to make sure that you are following the steps. But as I said, one of the things that's really important is that you be very precise in your grid and in your square. It's got to be exactly lined up or it won't work. I hope that makes sense to you and I'll stop this video now. The last step would have been to erase the grid if I had finished the whole page and color it in with crayons or colored pencils. It'll be very beautiful. And you can see how it's reflecting. I didn't color this guy's wing in, but that would be the wing and the tail of this bird. Thanks for watching. See you in class.